the danger for those of us who want to deliver, to have faith with the British public and deliver on their vote for Brexit, is that if this, if this vote is not passed tonight, if this deal is not passed, then Brexit could be lost. She was already having a hard time speaking there. Well, that was the UK Prime Minister in the House of Commons earlier. Now, after two years of talks, tonight's vote really is a moment of truth for Theresa May. And so what, what could it all mean for her political future? Could she survive this? Well, our London correspondent, Vincent McAvity, joins us now from Downing Street. I think, Vincent, this is the question everyone is asking. Can Theresa May actually survive this if her deal fails a second time? Good evening, Tessa. Well, for all of the criticisms levelled at Theresa May, I don't think anyone can doubt that she is the great survivor. At every twist and turn of the Brexit process, when we thought that she was done for, she has managed to cling on, in part because no one really has wanted to take over her job during these difficult few years of negotiations. But today in the Commons, she really needed a Churchillian level of performance to try and get MPs on side. And once again, like we saw at the Conservative Party conference back in 2017, it was her voice that failed her. She immediately got up and it was croaking and incredibly strained. She did try to make a joke of it, saying you should hear what John claude Juncker sounds like. But the Prime Minister didn't give a level of a performance in the Commons that was going to win over many MPs. There are some, uh, Sir Robert Sims and uh, Greg Hands in the past couple of hours and Nigel Evans who have said that they've changed their position and they'll now back the Prime Minister's deal. But it still looks like she is in for a crushing defeat. And then what is going to happen? We know we've got these votes coming up uh, tomorrow on whether or not they will go ahead with no deal. It's likely the MPs will block no deal. And then the one on Thursday about extending Article 50. And that would run until the time of the European elections uh, later on this year. Theresa May said for years, over 100 times in public, that the 29th of March was going to be Brexit Day. She then went back on that. She said there wouldn't be a general election. She went back on that. So really the question is now, with Theresa May likely having lost twice on her withdrawal agreement, what will she be willing to do? I cannot see her wanting to have another general election. She doesn't need to have one until 2022, and she doesn't want to risk a Jeremy Corbyn government. That is one of the things that she's able still to kind of convince her MPs to follow her on is to try and stop that eventuality. So could she possibly have a second referendum? Might she take her referendum? Her withdrawal agreements to the public and see whether she can get support from them. It's something that the Labour Party are now backing. That is their position. So perhaps they could cut a deal that it's Theresa May's withdrawal agreement is one of the options and then remain as the other. At the moment, it is still unclear. I've spoken to MPs in the House of Commons this afternoon. They can't see what it is that she can do. She has stalled for so much time, but that really now just can't go on. One little detail, though. Inside Downing Street, they're fixed on one date, apparently, the 28th of May, because if the Prime Minister stays until that date, it means at the very least she's beaten Gordon Brown's record of time in number 10 Downing Street. All right, thank you for that. Our correspondent there, Vincent McAvenny in London. And joining us in the studio, we have a German MEP from the European People's Party and chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee, David McAllister, and a British Labour MEP, Nina Gill. Well, Last night, there were some people who were shocked, some people who were surprised that Theresa May was here, and some people who knew or were expecting it. But um, do you think that the theatrics that, that Theresa May did last night was also partly a fight for her political survival, not just her deal, but for herself as well? I think what we saw yesterday night was that the European Union is committed to get this withdrawal agreement now done and we are running out of time, we are seriously running out of time and we should concentrate on our future relationship where a lot of the issues which are discussed in the moment can then be resolved. So this was once again a final move to show willingness and cooperation and now every single member of the House of Commons will have to shoulder his or her own responsibility. I mean, last night we had an MEP uh, here who was saying that this was uh, humiliation for Theresa May to actually have to come here. Um, you're seeing it in a positive light, but some people probably don't. What do you, how do you see what she did last night? Was it also a fight for her political survival? I would say 
it was. She's always trying to reach out to the very far right in her party, if you can put it that way. So she wanted to try and show, look, I'm doing everything, because already people in UK were starting to blame the EU, saying EU are not giving us anything more. Well, what was quite clear yesterday evening, yes, the European Union tried to clarify, but she clearly doesn't read things very well. I mean, it was clear from day one that the EU were limited as to what they could give her. I mean, she has put herself in this impossible situation by the red lines she's drawn. You know, it, it, it's a very difficult situation to manoeuvre for anybody. So I would say she's always been fighting for her political survival. That's why she's boxed herself in by giving the, you know, the right in her party um, all the red lines. Mm. And now she doesn't have any more room to manoeuvre. Mm. So do you agree with that, that actually, even if um, it's seen, you, you see it as the European Union having moved a step forward, it was a very, very minimal step because, you know, Nina was pointing out that their hands are tied. They, they can't really make much of any move. The withdrawal agreement was negotiated for 18 months between the EU and the UK government. And these were very firm negotiations. And in the end, both sides had to compromise. And this is the result which sure. we wanted to present to the but British the side. the that were given last night. Yes, but, but that's the most the European Union can do. There's, much, there's nothing much more we can do. If the UK is interested in getting an orderly Brexit done, they will have to accept what has now been negotiated. And Jean-Claude Juncker was very clear when he said, this is a second chance, there won't be a third chance. So once again, it's up to the members of the House of Commons to decide if this is the way forward or not. But the problem is that many in her own party and others, I mean, my party have said this deal was not acceptable to them. And in fact, this has been clear from all the opposition parties. And while she alluded to reach out to them, she made no significant changes. You know, in politics, we learn here in the European Parliament, you have to you know, get consensus. You cannot just stick to your own deal and say, I'm going to get this through. It's my so you're deal. Not happy with it. Your party is not happy with it, clearly. So no, the, the, voting we've always it. said the deal sure. was not acceptable to us. And so have others within her own party who've said the deal is not acceptable. So rather than listen and change her deal, she wants to keep the same deal and keep putting it back to the House of Commons, which but clearly is not going to deal. To what? There's, again, you, you mentioned it yourself. It, everybody's limited in the moves that they can make, so change it to what? That would, what would appease well, the Labour? Well, clearly for us, we want a softer Brexit. I mean, Labour's position is that we don't want this hard Brexit that she... Which she presented. can't do because of her own... Exactly. And so we, we would prefer to stay in the customs union because that resolves the backstop problem in Ireland and it is better for all our manufacturing uh, industries. Mm. So that's been our position all along. So now I think what Labour's position is, is that, you know, if we can't get a deal... We definitely don't want no deal at all. It's not in the interest of the British people. So what we will be looking for is that if either Parliament takes control sure. and takes the decisions away from the government, or we try to find a way no. to have a, another referendum and put it back to the people. All right, just, just very quickly, because the, 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 the feeling is that it's going to be voted down um, tonight. And what would be your reaction to that? I mean, what, what, what could possibly... So we know what's going to happen in the next few days. If it's voted down tonight, then what? Well, if a deal is voted down once again, it's up to the House of Commons to show a constructive way So really way the vote is... Forward. In, the, the ball is in the, in the UK's Look, we court. all want to avoid okay. a no-deal Brexit. I think that's common sense. Okay. But those right. who are going to vote against the deal must then be ready to show a way forward which is acceptable okay. for both sides. Okay, we'll leave it at that for now, because we have a lot more coming up on Raw Politics. We'll cross back live to London for the latest on tonight's vote. Plus, Jean-Claude Juncker gets Twitter talking with a cheeky comment about the UK Prime Minister, Theresa May. That's still ahead in the programme.